of course, I was back in D.C. Uh, everybody knows it was a productive trip. Basically, on the public lands concepts, so it certainly knows that we basically got a few, everything that we were working on, our resolution in NACOs, got taken care of in the past. So, so I'm kind of uh, going to get through here real quick. There's a couple of them on the public land side, you know, the uh, delisting of the American Indian and the, uh, the proper uh, resolution opposing the listing of the black pine snake. Uh, so that's, that's something that we can do also. But the uh, resolution for the reclassification of the disease and insect and effects of forest products is a good thing that will help out the uh, East Oregon and Lake Hens. Uh, those products that are having the big, big forests that are dead and dying and have to go to the lake. Uh, our post-fire litigation, 579C, carried forward is now a national policy with the Economic National Association, so they'll be working on uh, recovering 25% uh, of the post-fire litigation uh, back in the counties as per the 1908 Act that was originally agreed on. The uh, moving uh, wildfire funding into FEMA was agreed on, and we move forward with that again, so we carried that forward from the national side. So we'll still be working on moving that uh, three to five hundred million dollars in the FEMA so that we can get back to management and the forest and use our dollars appropriately, bringing everything back to our fire regime class one, uh, which would be a very positive process. And there was some heavy discussion, you know, we came up with resolution supporting a uh, SRS reauthorization. It looks like we're going to be moving forward with the uh, one-year reauthorization concept because it had active forest management uh, concepts built into that, small pieces where the uh, proposal by Senator Wyden uh, did not have any active forest management. Even though there was, uh, his recommendation was a three-year reauthorization at 2011 levels, which is higher. 13 level, which is offered, uh, recommended by uh, uh, Congressman Walden. Uh, and it would have uh, been able to provide more dollars to the local counties through uh, basically a uh, subsidy payment. The decision was basically determined that the Widens plan basically had about $2, $2.6 billion worth of uh, offsets that had to be acquired that were unidentified at this period of time. And no one where he's going to come up with that kind of money to offset the, uh, the payment. Where the Walden plan was a uh, one-year reauthorization at, at 2011 level, uh, 2013 levels, which is lower, and was a cost neutral, scored by CBAO. So it had more uh, probability of actually going through and being done. And with the understanding that Representative Bishop coming out of the House Science Resources Committee would be following that up with a new active forest management active forestry bill that wasn't the same as 1526 that used a lot of the components of 1526 but had less horse bills in it so that it could be uh, passed to the Senate and actually uh, receive the 60 votes necessary to move forward into law. So that's pretty much... Uh, and that's moving forward or it's passed? That we're, this is, I'm talking about National Association of County Policy. This oh, is all passed. Uh, a lot of the Hill visits did fund uh, revolve around the SRS dollars uh, built. I think we move the taxes on those federal lands. It's pretty much a done deal, fully authorized, and will be fully paid. Uh, even though that uh, that is much less than what the uh, taxpayer is paying on their land, at least it's a way to keep the government in check in a way the federal government so that they uh, understand that this land is not being in production at this point in time as it is in the eastern portion of the United States. And as long as they remember that, they will have to pay that bill and remind themselves that it's not production. So the majority of the Hill visits, uh, we went through a lot of them, were mostly revolved around SRS and some kind of management component into the forest and getting it so that we can put type, some type of SRS funding in place and then work on the management components so as the receipts come up, the SRS payments come down so the, self, so the program is self-contained and not being a subsidy any longer. The idea is to get away from the subsidy, but yet to have the SRS at the floor level. 
So that that's if it falls below on the receipts, that's the floor because the counties have to have that, and the government needs to understand that that's the minimum. And on the federal side, needs to understand that's the minimum, and they'll get the receipts is what will take it away from that. So the subsidy would have to happen. So uh, that was a very positive, positive, positive meeting. So, Okay, we have uh, BLM is asking for a uh, is, that, is open enrollment basically for BLM for RAC members for the new uh, regional RAC. Uh, that's where the Title II funds will be uh, determined where those spent where they're spent. Uh, one, if I if I back up just a little bit, the what we're pushing for is the, from the county side is that everybody do we do both you understand the Title One, Two, and Three mm -hmm. funds? Okay. Title I funds and where they can come in their general. Title three is a uh, search and rescue of that type. And Title II are basically county funds that are diverted over to the federal governments for these racks to determine where they can be spent for different programs in the, in the forest. So BLM or with the Forest Service. The Walden uh, initial process of that Walden's proposing is that the all the funds for the 2011 payment be just moved into the Title I program and given to the counties because it is a retroactive for 2013. So removing the restrictions of Title II and Title III because we've already got to that point where it's needed and, and it's we're already passed that. The in place, right? And the uh, Forest Service and BLM basically don't have the racks available or in place to be able to execute new expenditure of these funds. And that's on a national basis. So a uh, meeting with Randy Phillips, who's the liaison of the Forest Service, uh, frankly said, there's no way, we, if these funds are put into Title II funds, there's no way we could execute those. So the push right now is to move all that into Title I and to uh, bring it into our general fund so that we can execute as necessary. So there might be some uh, concepts in the future coming before us for some uh, conservation and some projects within the forest that those funds might be able to be used for. So I think the, uh, the general discussion at the national level is saying, look, we're not necessarily opposed to this, but we need some indicators that you're going to be able to be using some of this from what the Title II concepts were for, but so be open with that. You're not going to have, supposedly, any reduction in the total of it, like it's only going into Title I versus Title II. Right? No reduction in the total, just basically on the 2013 payment schedule. If that's not able to be accomplished, then everybody uh, basically we're going to agree to this is basically a discussion at this point that we would uh, agree to our 2013 elections on where our Title I, II, and III funds went and to move forward to expedite the dollars coming back to the local jurisdiction. So, yeah, so if we don't have any um, issue with that, having that uh, 2013 election carrying forward, maybe that's a discussion we should have at some point in time, Joel. Uh, I don't know if we need to or if uh, we need the administration to come to talk to us and ask us where we stand on that. Um, but that's something we want to consider moving forward with this if, if that's going to be okay. Okay, with that being said, uh, here's a good example of those racks not being in place. A member RAC is a congressional appointment. It takes an act of Congress to put you in the RAC. Uh, I currently sit on the Forest Service RAC and it took an act of, con act of Congress to get me there, literally. So BLM has open applications for the BLM regional RAC that they're condensing and, and moving some RACs around and reorganizing the process. So this will be something that will be discussion at the ONC board meeting tomorrow morning, which will be attending, on uh, who's going to be the, uh, the local jurisdiction, the local government representative for the RAC. So uh, I always like to keep us at the table if possible. I'm sure there will be some competition for it. Uh, but I don't want to make application or have heard that we really work on you to make application if we're not in agreement that one of our members should be on that route. Uh, again, are we in front of where you make that determination? Or so, uh, it, I guess it's more than anything. If, uh, I can argue tomorrow that Jackson County can serve on the back. Sure. Okay.
they don't get a decision tomorrow. No, no, we have to turn the application in. I just want to make sure that we, uh, that it would be okay for us to go ahead and serve on the ground if, if, it, if it works out that way. All right. The AFRC annual conference is coming up. I was going to ask for permission to uh, attend. I shouldn't say conference, I should have an annual meeting. That's the American Forest Resource Council uh, annual meeting. That's where industry and the Forest Service and local government get together and discuss uh, forest policy and where we're trying to push. Uh, typically, with the members of Congress or defendants. And, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I have a conflict. Uh, my wife's going to the dental conference that same point in time because of her work and I have children. So, uh, when is it? Uh, April 6th through 8th, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's at least for the 6th and 9th. Uh, up in Skamania, Washington. I'm pretty flexible. So if, if, I I can't, kids. if I can't attend, because of my children, it would be nice if uh, we could get somebody there to be able to bring the information back because it is a, a very good information gathering uh, program for that annual meeting. So I think the next week we have AOC. Yes, it's a, it's a very busy week. I would prefer to be able to do a public safety meeting in Salem on Monday, this, and then back to Monday in Salem for meeting. So we we'll do I'm pretty Okay, I'll look. I, so, in my mind, I know I have something there. But I tell it right now, yeah, I me never too. Know where I am. Yeah, yeah I get it. Okay. Can you talk to us about Tuesday? Okay. Uh, uh, and that's on Thursday. Oh, Thursday? So, so Thursday. So that'll be next good. Thursday. Okay. 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 And then uh, I received an email yesterday. <coughs> to the fourth, I have been nominated, and it kind of came to a surprise for me. Uh, each state has the opportunity to nominate one person to the National uh, Cambridge Leadership of, uh, of Academy for the National Association of Counties. I've been nominated to represent the state of Oregon in that leadership program. And uh, I'm asking, is that something you guys would be interested in running to participate in. One individual per state is allowed to attend. There's about 25 people total in the class, maybe 30 max. So not even the entire country gets to uh, put one of their representatives in. Uh, I've been nom nominated, and if we do agree to this, uh, we accept it into that class. So I would like to personally see you know, more information about what it entails you know, before I put it sounds like something that would be worthwhile to be represented. It's kind of a, a unique honor to be able to have that. I did bring a package like we did two guys. Yes, and I made one copy. So they're going to want to uh, have to have it all completed and turned back in prior to April 1st to right. really accept the nomination. So I just want to make sure that you guys have that in the show that we get part of that. All right, that's all that I have at this point in time for committee reports. Uh, or liaison reports, excuse me. I know it's a lot. Uh, I tend to get that way sometimes, my apologies. Uh, review of calendars. Uh, in March, for the week of March 9th, we have our work session here. We have a regular meeting on Wednesday. We have our staff meeting on Thursday. We have our budget reviews in the conference room. And our search and rescue awards banquet. Are either one of you planning on attending the Metro Police Association? I'm not able to, but no, I'm not able to attend. And then, um, any, either one of you coming up Monday for ASC meetings? I'm not either. And I'm going to see if I can get another um, computer or phone. Is that, like, is that available sometimes? We are. I would, I would encourage you that when you're at some point in time to be involved in committees that you liaise on with, like the water site. Mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, the policy working through the state is discussed there. So one of the uh, one of the key topics in the past has been uh, taxing of wells, that hundred dollar tax of wells, and if the county were going to support or oppose that concept, and that's where the uh, policy is comes from. 
for the, the state association of counties. And if you don't attend those meetings, then they have a tendency to take a life of their own. And uh, so when the uh, state association support of that uh, $100 tax, that's where that uh, discussion is had. So we're unable to, at the time I was sitting on that committee, and I was unable to overcome the, the, uh, the vote to be able to keep that from happening. So I would encourage participation because that's where that's discussed. But if there is a chance that more than one of you will be at the same committee meeting, we should know, we should put notice, right? Even if it's by telephone. Oh, okay. right. So if it is by telephone, it's still. Are you going to that? I will be at AOC on Monday. Uh, I, I try to stay involved with that because it's over time we've had an influence on being able to direct the state association uh, into what we'd like to see in Jackson County.